Good morning. It is Saturday, December 12th, and we continue in our last day of our second week of Advent. And so we begin our time of daily prayer by lighting our two candles of our Advent reading. We come now into our time of daily prayer, and as we do so, I remind you that uh, we will continue for one more day with the prayers that have been guiding us and the scriptures that have been guiding us throughout this second week of Advent. Uh, by now, they should be pretty familiar to us, and so many of them, uh, we will even be able to anticipate the words that are to come. And in that familiarity with these words, you know, we're able to reflect on them in a new way and in a different way because we're not distracted by the newness of these words. And so we come now into this time of daily prayer in the second week of Advent on Saturday, December 12th. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. In the beginning, Lord, I was alone, like the earth before your spirit moved over the waters. I was formless and empty and darkness filled the depths of my heart. Then it was as if you declared, let there be light and out of the darkness, I began to see hope like a shimmering ray of love breaking through the parting clouds at the conclusion of the night. In the beginning, Lord, I was alone, but when I saw you in the light, I was no longer afraid. You held out your hand, and though I had a choice, I had no choice, because to refuse was to embrace again the darkness. In the beginning, Lord, I was alone. Now I am again a part of your creation, loved, wanted, needed, family. In the light of your presence, I hold out my heart that others might glimpse through it your reflection and be drawn from the darkness that I once embraced into the light of your sunrise, the brightness of your face. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior of the world, be the center of all that we are and the life that we lead. Lord Jesus, light in this dark world, illuminate our hearts and minds. Be the center of all that we are and the life that we lead.
belongs to Jesus' name. The healer wounded on a tree to bear our grief and sin. The King gave up His crown so we could have a And then from John 1, there came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. We enter now into a time of silence for reflection, either on the words of that scripture that we just read that I will put back on the screen for you, or just simply looking at a light that you have lit in your space, or maybe just closing your eyes and enjoying the peace and the calm of God's presence. We come now into a time of silence. In the lonely places, the wilderness, where we stand forlorn, windswept and alone, your voice calls out, prepare a way for the Lord. In the dark places, the shadows, where we hide our fears, embrace our tears, your voice calls out, prepare a way for the Lord. For the desert places in which we walk, the streets we roam, the paths we cross guide our feet. Take us to places where you would go, Give us words that you would use, that in this Advent season of promise and preparation, we might point the way with John the Baptist to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. O come, thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come again, and with us ever dwell. 
Our scripture lesson comes to us again from the Jesus Storybook Bible. And the chapter that we are reading this morning is entitled 10 Ways to Be Perfect. And it covers material from Exodus 16 and 17, and then all the way from 19 through 40. So it covers a lot of ground in this one chapter. So there they all were, grannies, granddads, babies, uncles, aunts, children, moms, and dads, out there in the middle of the desert. They had blisters from all the walking. They were hungry and thirsty and much, much too hot. We don't like it, they said. It stinks. And so they, for that matter, did stink because no one had taken a bath in weeks. Now remember, because this is something they'd forgotten, God had done amazing things for his people. He'd hidden them inside a cloud. He'd moved to the sea. He had set them free. But God's people still weren't happy. They didn't care about being free. Wasn't it better when they were slaves? At least they'd had lots of nice food to eat. God doesn't want us to be happy, they said. It was the same lie that Adam and Eve had heard all those years before. God has brought us out here to kill us. God doesn't love us. But they didn't know God very well, did they? Every day of their journey, God kept on showing his people how well he would look after them if they would trust him and obey him. When they were hungry, God made the sky rain with food, bread coming down from heaven. What is it? They asked each other. They didn't know, so they called it, what is it? Which, of course, is a very good name for something when you don't know what it is. When they were thirsty and started quarreling, God made water flow from a rock. Moses called that place quarreling because that seemed like a good name, too. And still God's children didn't trust him or do what he said. They thought they could do a better job of looking after themselves and making themselves happy. But God knew there was no such thing as happiness without him. So God led them to a tall mountain. God wanted to talk to his people and show them what he was like. He wanted to help them know him better and tell them about the special land that he was going to give them. The whole earth belongs to me, God said, but I have chosen you. You are my special family. I want you to live in a way that shows everyone else what I'm like so they can know me too. God called Moses up the mountain. The great mountain shook. A thick cloud fell, thunder roared, lightning crackled, and God gave Moses ten rules called commandments. I want you to love me more than anything else in all the world, and know that I love you too, God told them. That's the most important thing of all. God gave them other rules, like don't make yourselves pretend gods, don't kill people or steal or lie. The rules showed God's people how to live, and how to be close to him, and how to be happy. They showed how life worked best. God promises to always look after you, Moses said. Will you love him? And will you keep these rules? We can do it. Yes, we promise. But they were wrong. They couldn't do it. No matter how hard they tried, they could never keep God's rules all the time. God knew that they couldn't, and he wanted them to know it too. Only one person could keep all the rules. And many years later, God would send him to stand in their place and to be perfect for them. Because the rules could not save them. Only God could save them. So this morning, as we think about the rules, the commandments that God gave to show his people how to live the life of joy and happiness and love that he had planned for them, the rules that we need his help, his Savior, to keep, we hang Commandments, the Ten Commandments on our Jesse tree.
situations in this world that are on our hearts and in our minds today before the Lord for his tender care. And as we do so for one more time, we imagine that circle, that circle of God's care and love surrounding us as we come before him in prayer and surrounding those people and those names and those situations that we hold before him this day. So let us come now before the Lord in prayer. Circle us, Lord, Circle us with the light of your presence, bright within this dark world. Enable us to be overcomers of fear and temptation. Enable us to be victors over sin and despair. Enable us to become that which you would desire. In silence, we pray. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle us with the light of your salvation. Circle us, Lord, circle our family within the shelter of your outstretched arms. Protect them in each moment of their daily lives. Protect them in the decisions that they face. Protect their homes and relationships. In silence, we pray for our family. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle our families with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle this nation with Advent love and hope. Create a desire to listen to the Advent message. Create a willingness to understand and respond. Create a need to reach out to the Christ child. In silence, we pray for our nation. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle our nation with the light of your presence. Circle us, Lord, circle this world with the joy of your salvation. Where there is sickness and disease, bring healing. Where there is hunger and despair, bring hope. Where there is torture and oppression, bring release. In silence, we pray for our world. Lord of creation, Lord of salvation, circle this world with the light of your presence. Lord, thou hast given us thy word for a light to shine upon our path. Grant us so to meditate on that word and to follow its teaching that we may find in it the light that shines more and more until the perfect day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, may you have a blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow for um, our service of daily prayer tomorrow as we begin our third week of Advent. Bye-bye.